So the first walkthrough I ever made was of Resident Evil back on the PlayStation 1. So you might have noticed I have a little thing for zombie based media and this is no exception. This was a game that I played a little bit or a lot actually. I played it a lot back in secondary school and I love it. And there's been a wee bit of a renaissance with flash type games. So for the flash player that was normally used to be able to play these games on browsers did get put down, put down, set round back like old Tello and put out his misery. But there's been a, a wee bit of a renaissance with Flash games. Thankfully there's a lot of people that want to preserve digital content and there are a lot of different means that you can use to actually go back and play them. I had an inkling to play some Flash games and I tried to just, you know, go on Google Chrome and play it and just trying to get it to run was just not happening. But I'll leave a link down in the description below to the Flashpoint player. That's what I've been using to play these Flash games again. So if you want to go back and play through these games, you can. If you don't, or it seems like too much of a faff, then you have this walkthrough and commentary to tie you over. Get that a combination of both zombie killing desire and flash gaming desire out of the way so walk through a bit of a loose term to use it for a game like this you mostly just shoot things although there is a little bit of strategy involved and i did end up playing it a few times trying to find the best way to make sure i had unlocked all the weapons so we play as jack i'm not actually certain if they give him a name in this game but he definitely gets named later on so this is jack and we are just trying to survive the zombie apocalypse and what you want to do when you start out so you just have a pistol and you want to spend most of your points early on actually getting more survivors it's kind of difficult to see the benefit that the survivors have but when you're on the later waves and you have no survivors compared to when you have a lot of them you'll notice it and you may actually end up dying so focus on getting your survivor count up the maximum amount of survivors you can have is six so the strategy is pretty much find survivors until you have six and then start looking for weapons and another reason why this is the better way of doing it is there are certain points where zombies will just come along and drop a new weapon so day three which we've just completed there you'll notice that one of the zombies seem to be carrying a revolver and what that means is that we now have a revolver to play with so there's no point doing any searching for weapons up until day three get your survivors up there get some support when you're killing the zombies and now we have a full stack and now we can kind of look at different ways of doing it so there's I think 11 guns in total as we go through and there's like a little bar which will show you how far you are to discovering the next weapon and it is it's basically like a bar you have to fill up it's not like a, a random chance which is I think changed a little bit differently in the last stand too which I'll probably do a walkthrough of that as well because I love these games they're just nice little short fun ones so there's quite a few guns we'll get and the game actually allows you to swap between two weapons by pressing the space bar there's unlimited ammo for all of the weapons you come across so you don't have to worry about running out and you can have a, a nice backup weapon but it is a little bit of a noob trap just because it is the next weapon that you get does not necessarily mean that it's going to be better so the ump is a pretty good gun uh fully automatic so you don't have to start getting tinnitus on your finger smashing it and that's actually one of the biggest problems with the first pistol the glock that you get is if you want to get the maximum amount of dps out of it it's quite straining on your hand so having a fully automatic weapon takes that off and seems to just have higher dps and in terms of how you survive the waves i mean most of the strategy is involved in how you spend your time in between the waves as opposed to how you play it once the waves are actually here to be honest there isn't a huge amount i mean just generally try and aim for headshots make sure you're moving up and down the accuracy of the weapons is not 100 percent. it's not going to be a direct line there's a little bit of a spread to it so if you're uncertain about landing a headshot it's often a good idea just to kind of aim for center mass obviously you can get headshots it's going to do more damage but if you're especially if the zombies are a decent distance away just just fucking center mass just mow them down and we're actually a little bit ahead of time so you can see that biker has just dropped the shotgun so even if we hadn't been looking for it uh it would have been dropped at this point but we already have maximum amount of survivors 
And the shotgun, I don't like it. Um, and you'll notice whenever I'm using it, uh, the reload animation for it is just very, very long. So I usually have it as like a backup. I'll fire five shots and then switch back to another weapon because the amount of time you spend reloading that weapon, the zombie's just going to do way too much damage for you. Okay, so when we were out searching for a weapon last time, we ended up losing one of the survivors. So the general strategy I have is when you have six survivors, look for weapons. When you have five survivors, kind of split between them. When you have four survivors, you need to get the survivor number back up because the amount of DPS you're going to start to lose is actually pretty substantial. So you never want to go below four survivors. If you've gone to three survivors, somehow something's gone wrong, something's been messed up, don't bother searching for any weapons. Make sure you get the survivors back up again. But we ended up getting the shotgun purely because we had the points to spare. Um, always want to make sure that your barricade is up to 100% before each new wave. So you can see here, it's starting to get quite a lot. And this is what I mean. We were actually doing absolutely fine. But now because we only have four survivors instead of six, we're actually struggling quite a bit. Even if we're just absolutely full autoing, we're trying to hit the heads as much as possible. Obviously the UMP isn't the most accurate weapon. And sometimes it takes like half a clip to kill a single zombie. And when they start coming at you with waves, uh, it can be pretty challenging. So also the reason why survivors are so important, not only because they help you defend it, but they help you repair more. So every survivor adds plus five. So 25 for one hour work. It's just going to make everything else you're doing a lot more efficient. So we didn't go up to 100 here, went up to 89. That should be sufficient. And we managed to get our six survivors back. And you will just notice the difference between how much damage the zombies actually managed to do when I have them versus when I don't. So we got the chainsaw now. That's a pretty good secondary weapon, as you can imagine doesn't exactly excel in the range department so I do like to keep that as a secondary for when they do start to blob up a little bit on the walls because it's just able to deal a lot of damage to several units at once as you'd imagine from a chainsaw very very devastating one of the problems I find with it is when you get to the point that you're having to use it it's very difficult to then get zombies off of your walls and you're often kind of put into like the defensive stance so it is a last resort weapon you don't want to be using it for your main defense if you decide to just use a chainsaw and just don't bring any weapons i mean you kind of deserve to lose at that point now the sawn off shotgun i actually prefer over the normal shotgun i mean it makes sense it's a later weapon so it you would think it is a higher tier but the main reason i like it so it has an absurd spread on it so you know don't even bother trying to go for headshots this thing but because it has an absurd spread it can actually hit multiple targets from a distance and the reload animation is actually pretty good so this one i'm not too certain if in terms of dps i haven't gone into the game broken down the different amounts of damage that they do and which one has the objectively superior dps but it seems about comparable maybe slightly better than the you the submachine gun the ump so it's a good good uh good side grade maybe a marginal upgrade keeping the chainsaw in reserve again the normal shotgun once you've upgraded there's no point going back to it and this is pretty much just the game just increasing levels of zombies get better weapons as you progress onwards and there are 20 nights you need to survive which are about a minute long each, um, especially when I'm editing this for putting my commentary over it and I'm looking at how long each of the waves last. It's just over a minute, so I'm fairly certain once 60 seconds have passed, zombies stop appearing, which makes this about a 20 minute game, provided you don't mess up. Although as a kid, it felt way longer. But I suppose that's just how time is perceived as we get older. Time just seems to pass quicker. And there's actually some psychological reason why that's the case. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I don't remember off the top of my head. But if you're interested, you can go and look that up. There is actually a phenomenon why time seems to be longer when you're a child. And it probably has a fancy name based off of the surname of some psychologist that I've never heard of. So that's a thing. But this is kind of what I mean about not all weapons being created equal. So we are going to continue to hunt for higher weapons. And because this is a walkthrough, I kind of want to show you all the different weapons. But in all honesty, the hunting rifle we get here is going to be the best weapon until we get to the actual final weapon. The reason for that is, one, it does good damage. 
Two, it's very accurate, so you can actually reliably land headshots. And three, it has this penetration. So quite often when you see me firing, I'll be hitting a unit behind it. I'm not entirely certain how many zombies it can pass through. I don't think it's just a straight line through everything. I think it's passed through the first zombie, hit the second one. But that means that its DPS is effectively better than the other weapons you get after it. Even though the DPS of those weapons would probably be considered higher than the hunting rifle, if you factor in the probability of getting a double hit, essentially, it suddenly ramps it up a lot higher. I don't know why I'm talking about DPS like I'm some kind of mathematician, but that's the way you have to like look at weapons, isn't it, if you're a gamer? Or, well, if you're an autistic gamer, at least. You want to min-max everything and try and figure it out. But I will be showing off some of the other weapons and hopefully kind of like showing why I believe the hunting rifle is superior to them. So later on we'll get an Uzi, M421 and an AK-47. And the benefits of them obviously is that they're fully automatic so you don't have to worry about clicking. But there isn't really much clicking involved with the hunting rifle to be fair. And it has a pretty low rate of fire. But that's honestly not that a zombie apocalypse would ever happen. But if there was a zombie apocalypse, hypothetically, you don't want fast firing weapons. You want single shot, high accuracy weapons. You want to be aiming for headshots, assuming that they're going to be the type of zombies that can only get taken out by headshots. And as you go in with some weird rules like the crossed or something. Um, if ever you haven't heard of the crossed, I'm not even certain whether or not to recommend it. It's a comic book series about rather than being zombies, there's more like... I guess kind of closer to 28 days later, like virus rage zombies. Right? Well, they're not really zombies, they're infected, quote unquote. And it's, they have certain levels of intelligence, they retain some of their intelligence, and they just become sadists, just going around, uh, essaying everything that comes into sight, mutilating stuff. And I quite like the first comic they did, but now they've done over 100 issues of Comic Badlands, and it just, the writing is so bad. It just gets to comic levels of absurdity and i just ended up keep reading just like okay we have we we jumped the shark many issues ago but let's just see how utterly ridiculous it gets. I mean, it just has some very juvenile just storytelling morality it's, it's just edgy for the sake of edgy if you're looking for edgy go read crossed if you want something a bit more substantive read the first issue or the first story and then don't bother with any of the rest of it but yeah, we have the Uzi, so that's just spray and pray weapon. It does still do pretty good DPS, but the automatic weapons don't have any form of penetration. And I think that's the key point which makes them inferior to the hunting rifle. Especially when we get to this stage, there's just going to be so many just, just running at your walls that accuracy kind of goes out the window a little bit. And another reason why the automatic weapons aren't as good. I mean, I've got the M4... A1 and the Uzi for this one uh, just to kind of show really how less effective they are because the zombies are coming at you in such huge waves that you don't need to worry about lining up two shots if you fire you're going to be hitting two people and especially we start to get this some of these specialized zombies so you get these SWAT guys coming in that obviously you need to shoot in either the head or the legs and then pretty soon we're also going to start encountering army people and army people you can't even shoot them in the head they're wearing helmets at the same time so you need to be aiming for the legs which obviously you're not going to be doing as much damage with the legs and if you have an automatic weapon if you're trying to hit them in the legs then chances are that some of the shots are going to spread hit the armor not do any damage and in addition to that there might be other zombies in front of them that are going to be acting almost like as a form of meat shield so you're trying to hit these zombies in the leg and then there's something else in the way so you're not able to get the right angle you're not able to penetrate through and your effectiveness to deal with them is just way less so i kind of dropped the chainsaw at this point and i use the machine gun just to get, get spray and pray a little bit but when things really start to hit the fact just look just look it it, it it doesn't make much sense because if the m4a1 again i'm not a gun nut by any stretch of the imagination i've never fired a real gun in my life but i'm of the assumption that a hunting rifle and an m4a1 both fire the same ammunition or well, it depends on what they mean by a hunting rifle. They fire different calibers, but they're both going to be firing, you know, not a nine millimeter, but something bigger. So the whole point of assault rifles when they're invented is to kind of bridge the gap between submachine guns and more 
single shot long range weapons. So you'd think if you had an M4A1, you just pull it to single fire, it would basically just be a hunting rifle, but better. But, you know, game design, game logic. And, you know, you have to show off the M4A1 because Jack in the back there is always holding that as his main weapon. So you need to at least show it off. But no, the hunting rifle is just superior to the other ones. So if you're just trying to beat the game, there's no point going for any of the other weapons until we manage to get the last one. And even the last weapon isn't necessary to grab it. In fact, when I went and played this, coming back to it for the first time, I didn't manage to unlock. I was a little bit not effective at using my time to the best of the ability. I had a all or nothing mentality, which was if you have six survivors, then spend all the time looking for weapons. If you have less than six, uh, spend all the time looking for survivors. And even just the small increments you get in searching for weapons, like if you do like a four to eight hour split kind of thing, it does add up. And so it's very important. Kind of the strategy is early game, all of it onto survivors until you have six survivors then all of it onto finding weapons until you start losing survivors and then kind of split it accordingly if you have five survivors then you could probably do like eight hours searching for weapon four hours searching for survivors if you have four survivors then switch that round do eight searching for survivors four searching for weapons and if you have all the survivors again you can just plonk all of your time into trying to find new weapons now there is a little bit of rng element to it naturally you don't know when you're going to lose a survivor searching uh, there is a bar for when you're finding a new weapon but there doesn't seem to be a bar as far as i'm aware when it, you're searching for survivors maybe there is like some kind of mathematical equation going on behind i did look up the wikis to try and find out if someone had figured it out maybe there's someone out there who's actually looked into the formula but i have no idea what the formula is i am not a game designer i don't know how to look into that kind of information so i can just go by anecdotal evidence and it does seem to be that it's you know, a little bit rng so some runs will just go a little bit better than others but there should be enough leeway that if you play intelligently then it's not like well i say that in solitaire there's a theory isn't there that every game is theoretically possible to beat but that you shouldn't ever come across a situation where a game is unwinnable because of rng it's not that difficult but you just kind of just look at how much they don't get to my walls when using the hunting rifle and it kind of it annoys me because you just want to go full auto on it but yeah and there we go we have the last weapon the beretta <laughs> 50 caliber like just beast and the only reason that this now takes over the hunting rifle is because basically this is a hunting rifle but on steroids it has 10 rounds in the chamber you don't have to reload up every shot it can take out three zombies in one shot honestly at this point, if you had no survivors, you could just solo the game. The, this weapon, yeah, just three of them taken out in one shot. There's just, they're not even going to come close to the walls now. I say that as one comes close to the wall. You get what I mean. So from this point onwards, it's kind of just smooth sailing. As long as you don't actually go AFK and are still actively shooting zombies, you're going to be able to beat the last stand one so what i like to do is because whenever i play games like this i like to role play a little bit so i'm going to make sure i spend my time trying to make sure i have six survivors let's get as many out of the zombie infested cesspool as we can you know going to be good guy jack not that you see any of the survivors in the subsequent games spoiler alert i'm assuming they all die Either they all die or something goes wrong and they kind of disperse. Uh, maybe they don't survive, but they're not with us anymore. So one thing that I really like about little Flash games like this is just seeing how they ballooned into other properties. So the first, I guess, Flash game I've made a walkthrough of was the Ex Mortis trilogy. So first two games were Flash games, and then the third one technically was still a Flash game, but you actually, actually paid money for it. And I just remember really liking Last Stand 1 and 2 as a kid, and then I think Union City came out, I played it for a little bit. I didn't really feel the vibe of it because it just was so different. But if you were to hop on over to the Last Stand wiki, you actually see that they have made five games. And I'm fairly certain that the last one 
So the last stand aftermath, you can actually play on Steam and the PlayStation now. So it's gone from this tiny little flash game and it's just evolved into something bigger. So yeah, you have the last stand one, last stand two, which is very similar to this, adds a few more elements. Uh, last stand Union City, which I've never played. I might go back and play it now that I'm on a bit of a, a flash game binge, which was more kind of like a side-scrolling RPG. They then made one called The Last Stand Dead Zone, which unfortunately you can't play anymore. Um, I think it was... I think it was a game released on Facebook, which would explain why I never played it, because only boomers still use Facebook. Like, seriously, if you're under the age of 65 and you're using Facebook, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> But no, they released that one and the servers for it were taken down in 2021. So unfortunately, it doesn't, you can't play it anymore. I mean, maybe there, again, there's some way you can have access to it of all the open source that exists, but I don't know about it. But The Last Stand Aftermath came out in 2021, actually, so very recent. And I haven't played it, but I have looked at some of the screenshots and it looks good. You know, I. I don't know because obviously it's, I mean, I looked at screenshots, that's no indication of how good a game's going to be. And graphics are certainly no indicator of a game's, how good a game is. I mean, Undertale was, <laughs> Undertale was a really good game and the graphics for that are dreadful. But it's kind of a shame you don't really see that anymore. You know, back in the wild west of the internet where you would have someone start with like a flash game and then it develops as a, like, manage to create a small studio and go on to develop bigger and better things. Uh, you don't you don't really see that too often. You usually just get crap on Steam and hopefully they can progress further. But this game ended up having a, what seems to be a very successful game on Steam. There's another Flash game I want to play called uh, Rebuild, which I believe also had a similar uh, trajectory. It was a small company, I think like a, a husband and wife ended up developing it, something along those lines. And they ended up making the most recent rebuild was a game on Steam, which hasn't really appealed to me because the initial game had quite a lot of like very dark and oppressive atmosphere. And the new one just looks a little bit too cartoony, a little bit too Facebooky for my liking. But yeah, that is The Last Stand. 20 knights survived and the military come to save us. And we've managed to save six survivors at the same time. So that is all from this one. We will be playing The Last Stand 2 probably at some point soon. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch through this with me. Have a good day.